Ouais, pour SMT. Le sable est chadoré. So I'm a Palestinian Canadian. I uh, grew up in the city of Jerusalem. Uh, I'm the eldest of, of three boys. After high school, I uh, moved to the U.S. in the pursuit of higher education. I spent most of my time in Michigan, where I did my PhD at the University of Michigan. I got married two months after 9-11. And, uh, and my wife joined me uh, in the U.S. And um, this is when we started, I started to realize the struggle that uh, a Muslim woman goes through if she's not in a welcoming, inclusive uh, environment. We've had experiences where someone would shout at us, but not and go home. Or um, uh, we've had an experience where we once got lost on, on, a, on a hike, and so it got really late, and we finally made it to the road and you know, flagged someone and I think uh, they pulled over and then, but when they saw them, my wife, they then said, no, sorry, I can't help you and they drove off. And I think that's when I started preparing my papers to apply to immigrate to Canada. Yeah, just snake thick yarn. What happened to it? I'm first generation American. My parents immigrated from Lebanon and I grew up in the suburbs of Houston, Texas in the 80s and early 90s. And we were the only Muslim family in our school. Um, there wasn't really anyone else who shared my faith or who looked like me um, growing up. It wasn't until after actually 9-11 where you really started to really question your safety as a Muslim in America. When we were in Philadelphia, it, you know, an incident happened where um, a severed pig's head was thrown over um, one of the local Islamic schools in Philadelphia and pig's blood was also um, thrown over the, over the playground. You know, that was the type of situation that for me was like, okay, it's time to really see what life is like in other places. Keeping the Muslim identity was a struggle after 9-11. It's continuous fear, it's, um, it's bad for your mental health. That morning of 9-11, we saw the news, we went to school, everyone was okay, lunchtime comes and friends were saying, oh, did you hear what happened? Uh, your Muslim people attacked New York. What we didn't understand is like, what do we have to do with this? This is a terrorist group, bad guys that ended up doing this. What does that have to do with us? As a child, I still couldn't comprehend that this was something that reflected on my identity as a Muslim. When I moved to Canada, I was 16 years old. I was in high school. My first impression, I was very impressed. I was like, you know what? Um, this is different. It's like almost like you had um, a honeymoon phase where you moved from the U.S. with this extreme fear and you came to Canada and everything was beautiful. I went to high school with just one incident. It was almost like I had this phase where we didn't have any issues, but these hate speeches continued to increase and we're starting to see extreme behavior now. Like every other Muslim in Canada, I am paying attention to the rise of Muslim hate and Islamophobia that's happening around the country. And it almost feels like a very similar wave of instances and situations happening in Canada as well. As Muslims in Canada, I really hope that um, you know, my kids can live um, as proud Muslims, you know, and find acceptance and not feel like they have to constantly challenge a negative stereotype or narrative about Islam or about their, or their faith. 9-11 made me more cautious. Um, I was, I had to walk sometimes looking behind my back. It's fear, right? Uh, this 9-11, incident and the hate that it brought continues to put us in fear every day. Wow. My hope is when my children grow up they don't have to experience Islamophobia in a personal level or in a community level. Uh, we want it to be an issue that was resolved, that is resolved and no one has to ever face um, being afraid because of the religion they believe in.
Canada, it's a multicultural country. It's a country that prides itself on diversity. And yet we've been the country in which some of the worst Islamophobic violence has taken place. So I, I don't know if things are getting worse, but I think we're definitely confronting a challenge. And it's a serious challenge. Courage is, is, is I think, to, to me, is, is a very important quality that we have. If we're going to be able to confront uh, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, other forms of prejudice and racism. Okay. okay. A lot really nice now. So I'm the father of, of uh, four wonderful children, and obviously, uh, you know, I, I really hope for them just to feel normal. I want my kids to think that, you know, I am a member of a, of a big Canadian family that's 40 million strong. Just a normal, normal member of that family who's uh, pursuing uh, their destiny as everybody else is. But I hope also that we don't uh, fall into a cultural victimization where we should you know, uh, be active agents of our future as opposed to having external hateful forces define our future for us.